Okay, so this is question 3c, and we're still working on trigonometric graphs or functions. First thing that they said to us is that the f of x is 4 tan, it's negative 4 tan of x. And we can see it's a negative graph because it's a reflection, right? Instead of going up, it goes down first. So that is negative 4 tan of x. Then they're telling us that the g of x is 2 sine x minus 1. So we know that amplitude is 2 and our graph shifts vertically negative 1, so 1 step down. Next up we have a statement that says that um, it is for the period x is 0, which is over here, to 360 degrees, which is where they both end. Okay, now they're saying C and 150 degrees are the intercepts of G. G cuts, let's see that, G cuts the x-intercept here at C and at 150 degrees. Those are the intercepts. Next thing they tell us, D is the turning point for G, that's over here, it's the turning point. The graph of F and G intersect at 9,54 degrees and 204,62 degrees. So those points of intersection are these, and those are the numbers that correspond to them. A, B is parallel to the y-axis. So A, B is this line here, and it is parallel to the y-axis. And lastly, they're saying A is on G and B is on F. Let's answer the questions. Question number one, what is the period of F? We know that the F of X is a tangent graph, and we know that the period of a tangent graph is 180 degrees. We can see this because we go from start to start at 180 degrees. Question two, write down the range for the function of f. So we're going to write that either as y is an element of all real numbers, or you can write range as negative infinity, positive infinity. What is the maximum value of the g function? So the g function, the maximum value is somewhere over here. And we know that the g of x is a sine graph. So in our sine pattern, we have 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. Our maximum is over here, which is at 90 degrees. So we can do this, and we can say the g of x is equal to 2 sine of 90 degrees minus 1, which is 2 times 1, sine of 90 is 1, minus 1, which is 2 minus 1, and that ends up being 1. So the answer to the maximum is 1. What is the amplitude of G? We know that amplitude is not the same as the maximum and the minimum. We know that amplitude is generally going to be our equation, where we're going to say amplitude is half max of y, minus the minimum of y. Now we've calculated the maximum of y over here, so we can say it's half of 1 minus, we know that the minimum of y is a negative number because it's below the y-axis, right? So you just need to calculate it. So if I swap this out and I say my minimum is going to be here, so this is going to be 180 to 70, and this ends up being negative 1, so negative 2, negative 1 ends up being a total of negative 3. So I want a half of 1 plus 3 is 4, so that gives me a total of 2. I'm going to point out that this value is the same as that value over there. But I did do it with calculations, so you know the amplitude is genuinely 2. Next, they want to know the coordinates of D. D is the turning point for the G graph, which is the sine graph. 
we've just done that. So our G graph is here. Uh, at D, we have the turning point. We know that the coordinates are going to be 270 degrees and negative 3. That is the coordinates for D. Question number 6. Calculate the length of AB. So how we do this is what you need to notice is that they said that this AB cuts the y-axis at 60 degrees. So that's going to be significant to how we calculate this. So what we can do is when you look at the line AB, you should know that the value of x, which is 60 degrees, is the same everywhere on that line. What is different is the y value. So first you're going to solve for a, which is your green one, which is 2 sine of 60 degrees minus 1. And then you're going to solve for b, which is your blue line, which is negative 4 tan of 60 degrees. Now uh, you can go ahead and use your calculator for this. And you can say, I'm going to say 60. Again, my order of doing this is different to yours. Um, minus 1 gives me a total of 0, 0,7. 0, 0,732. Okay, 32. And then I do the same for negative 4, 10 of 60. So I'm going to say 60 degrees, 10 times negative 4, nope, and that gives me a total of negative uh, 6, hold on, negative 6.9282, negative 6.9282, double check, negative 6.9282. So the distance, remember that the distance cannot be negative. So we use absolute values here. And we're going to say the length from A to B is going to be 0, 0,732. Notice that I'm going 0, 0,7 upwards, right? And then I'm going to add the absolute value of negative 6,9282, which means this becomes a positive number. So in essence, what I've got is 0, 0,732 plus 6,92821. That's 0. And then I add that up. So that's 5 digits. 1, 2, 2 carry 1, 6, 16, and 7. So the distance then ends up being 7,66021 or 7,66. The length of AB is equal to 7,66 units if I round it off to two decimal places. Next question. Determine the coordinates of point C. Point C is the x-intercept uh, sorry, intercept for the graph, the green graph, which is the g of x, uh, 2 sine x minus 1. Okay, so if I want to know what you know about x-intercept from grade 9 is x-intercept y equals 0. g of x is another way of saying y. So I can now substitute this in and say 0 is equal to 2 sine x minus 1. Then I solve for x, which is what we want. We want the x value because we already know that y is 0. So I'm going to say plus 1 on both sides. 1 is equal to 2 sine of x. And then I say divide by 2 on both sides. So I'm saying sine of x is equal to a half. At this point, um, you need to remember this special triangle. Uh, technically this should be memorized and and the 45 degree triangle as well but what we know is we know that sine 
is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And what we have is a half, so we have 1 over 2, which means that the angle that we are referring to is 30 degrees. In other words, if sine of x is a half, then x is equal to 30 degrees. And this is something that eventually you were supposed to know off by heart. I know that we didn't spend a lot of time on this section. Okay, um, write an equation for the vertical asymptotes of the function of f. So you know, um, you know that an asymptote is a line that your graph tends towards but never touches. And you already know, based on your trig pattern, that your trig, uh, your ten asymptotes are normally 90 degrees and 270 degrees. They are asking specifically for an equation. So your equation is going to be x equals 90 degrees and x equals 270 degrees. What is the range if the h of x is 2 times the g of x plus 2? So this is again substitution g of x is 2 sine x minus 1 and the um, h of x is 2 times the g of x plus 2. That's the h of x. So I solved this by saying 2 times 2 is 4 sine x. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus 2. Those two cancel out. So the h of x ends up being 4 sine x. What is the range? The range refers to all of the y values that are valid in this instance. So I already know that my amplitude is 4. I know that I've got no vertical shift, which means that it's about the x-axis. This means that I'm going up 4 and I'm going down 4 which means that my range is going to be positive 4 and negative 4. And then to answer this question, I'm simply going to say my range is going to be from negative 4 up to positive 4. The end. Um, next up, they are asking me to describe the transformation from the f of x to the j of x where the f of x is negative 4 tan x and the j of x is 4 tan x plus 1. So basically, I, I wrote it the wrong way around, going from here to there, how do I do this transformation in words? The first thing that I see is that I have a reflection. So I need to um, indicate that there's a reflection about the x-axis and then the second thing that I notice is this plus 1 which I don't have in the f of x which is a vertical shift uh, which is up one unit or space whatever you want to call it now the remaining questions I would rather do with you in person in class. Um, otherwise, I might just do another video on question 11. Okay, hope you understood. Like and subscribe. Bye-bye.